Well, hey there. Thanks for stopping in tonight's shifts video. My name is James, and tonight I am joined by this fellow, Josh. And we are here to do a movie review. Our movie for tonight is One Cut of the Dead. Boom. Uh, so this is a, it's technically a 2017 film, but we didn't really get a kind of international release until 2019 uh, because Shudder picked it up and was able to pull it off the uh, the festival circuit and yep. give it to a wider audience, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, so One Cut of the Dead is a 2017 Japanese zombie comedy film written and directed by Shinichiro Ueda, I believe is how you pronounce it. Nailed it. I'm not good at Japanese names. I'd rather pronounce Japanese names, though, than like like European names. I feel like I'm worse yeah. at those. Yeah. I'm real bad at them. Yeah. So whatever. All those vowels. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, there's the there's the joke. You made the joke when we watched uh, Battle Royale that, you know, a lot of Japanese names are consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. I did. And like that makes them look <laughs> that makes them look difficult. Yeah. But it's kind of like Spanish where like you just pronounce every single sound. Right. And you'll get real close. Very much. Because they don't have a lot of like uh, silent letters like we have yeah. in English. So like, yeah, their yeah. languages make sense. Right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think I was pretty close there. Uh, anyway, uh, the back of the box here. Things go badly for a hack director and the film crew shooting a low-budget zombie movie made in an abandoned World War II Japanese facility when they are attacked by real zombies. There you have it. Perfect. To one cut of the dead. To one cut of the dead! <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. All right. And we are back with our thoughts on one cut of the dead. I'll start it off. I'll start, I'll start us off with a little bit of trivia. Love it. Uh, so this movie cost $25,000 to make. It currently has grossed worldwide over 30 million. That's insane. That's nutty. Just bonkers. Freaking I mean, bonkers. A hundred percent. Well, yeah, yep. you know what I mean. hundred <laughs> times like your investment. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just nuts. It's just nuts. Uh, so the first 37 minutes of the movie is actually shot in one take. It took two days and six takes for the cast and crew to get the perfect one. That seems really short. I know. It's kind of surprising that that's all it took, right? Yeah. Because so the first 37, so the mo 37 minutes of the movie is essentially this like film within a film, mm -hmm. which bing, bonus points. I love films within films. And the whole idea of the film that's within the film is that they're live streaming it. So it has to be done in one take because you can't cut and edit whenever you're doing it live. Yep. And so they actually did the whole take live as one take. Mm -hmm. um, but they just had to do it six different times. I did read that apparently they nailed it the second time, but a crew member, I think it was specifically a camera person, messed something up. And so then they had to run it again. And then, of course, they didn't get it the third time. So then of they course. had to run it again. And again, and yeah. again, and again, and then they got it. And they got it. So it was great. Uh, most of the cast actually paid money to be in the movie versus getting paid. Uh, apparently, this was like the capstone of some kind of like master class for like a, a TV film school um, of people doing acting and, you know, being uh, mm -hmm. crew members of, you know, the special effects and yeah. the people who are moving stuff around and moving cameras and stuff. So that's that's an easy way to keep your budget low. Is uh, when people are paying you to be in the yeah. movie. <laughs> Brad Pitt wants to be on your film. Yeah, you give me twenty million dollars. <laughs> Easy. Uh, the entire thing was shot in eight days, so it took two days to do the single thirty-seven minute shot at the beginning, and then uh, six more days to finish the film, mm -hmm. um, shooting wise. So that includes the whole kind of second act in the middle where we see them like putting the movie together, and then the third act where we see kind of the. Uh, the B camera and we get to see like behind the scenes, what was happening when the 37 minute film was made. Um, so this movie is a movie within a movie within a movie. So it, the setup 
is that a guy is making a zombie movie and then real zombies come while he's making the movie. Right. That was the back of the box. Yep. That's what it says on shutter. Yep. That's every, that everything that I've read about this movie. That's all that it says that it is. Right. And I've read quite a bit about the film. <laughs> like I'm sure kind of the third twist could be ruined if you read enough, but I feel like I read a lot about this movie. I heard a lot of people talk about it and that was never spoiled for me. So the movie ends at 37 minutes because it is a guy who made a movie about zombies. And then during him making that movie, a real zombie attack happens. And then the movie ends and we're like, Oh, was that it? Yeah. That seemed really short. It was fun and it was good, Mm -hmm. but that seemed really short, very short. And then it goes right into one month before filming the movie and we start getting all this backstory of like pre-production yeah casting yeah pre the the initial concept the director yeah. meets with like the studio executives and they're like hey we want you to make this thing mm-hmm. like and it's gonna be one one cut and it's all gonna be live and so we see all that and we're just like where is this going and honestly it takes kind of a dip I mean, in the middle of the movie, I was done with it. I was <laughs> totally done with it. I The second act is a little oh bit goodness. of a sleeper. I was over it. The first half, which I thought was good, was completely overshadowed by how bad the second half seemed to be. <laughs> and then right at the end of the second act, the third act, it was just one singular moment that really just went... I am 100% back in. And then from there, <laughs> it was just this completely enjoyable, like, fun carnival ride of yes. just all the way till the end. And it was so good. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. A carnival ride is a great way to descri- describe the uh, the third act. So essentially what happens is in the third act, we get to see, like, another layer of meta peeled back Mm. and we're watching a basically what is seems to be a behind the scenes telling of what's happening to these people as they're making a movie which the movie that they're making is about making a zombie movie but then real zombies it's like a visual director's commentary yeah all the problems for a fake movie yeah all the things that (laughs) happen to try to get them to this point yep and you get to see all of the, like, oh, this thing didn't happen right. So they had to improvise this or all these yeah. people had to do these things in between. And it was it's oh, so man. brilliant because they do all of these like callbacks to the movie. We're like we're watching it and we're like we laughed at a part because it's like, oh, that's funny because it doesn't really make sense. And I don't really know what he's happening. Oh, but we know this is a horror comedy. Mm-hmm. So they're just trying to be silly. Well. <laughs> When you see the behind the scenes of them making the movie within the movie, within the movie, uh, you see that like that is happening for a reason. So like one example is through the whole second act, we do see this one actor who's going to be in the film has a pretty major drinking problem. (laughs) And uh, we get to like the day of filming and we they bought like this big bottle of sake to celebrate at the end. And he, his eyes immediately are drawn to it. And they're like, no, 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 no drinking before because we have to do this live. We yeah. cannot fuck this up. Like everyone needs to be perfectly level headed. We'll get through it live and then we'll all party afterwards. <laughs> of course, <laughs> this guy finds the bottle of sake, drinks it all by himself. <laughs> there's this moment in the the film within the film where we see this guy he's become a zombie and he's like doing these weird like like erratic kung fu like tai chi movements and like we laugh because we're like oh it's a zombie yeah. comedy that's funny <laughs> but he's doing it because he's wasted and he has no idea what the fuck's going on <laughs> they just say go be a zombie and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> And then on top of everything, he, he pukes on the actor, and the actor doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know. He's just trying to play it off because it's all live. Because when we when we first see it, we're like, oh, this zombie like 
puke to try to like spread the disease. Right. But no, it's not that. No. He's just trashed. <laughs> and he's actually puking. When that happened, that's when I went from like this movie, like this second act is stupid to like, oh my gosh, everything I just saw is going to have this secondary meaning yeah. going forward. There was this was so good. The third act was was probably the best payoff <laughs> third act of Maybe any movie I've ever seen ever. I don't I feel like that's like being way too grandiose about the film because it is like an indie twenty five thousand dollar made film. But like just the payoffs and the callbacks, oh. every little thing came back. There were no plot holes. No. Nothing was left unturned. And that's what's great is because the thirty seven minute segment was so silly that it was riddled with plot holes. But that's because it was supposed to be Yeah. Because the jokes were coming in the third act. And then everything connected, and you're going, oh my gosh, I can't, like, oh my, <laughs> what? Every every point was was uh, called back to a certain point while they were, like, either creating the movie or going through their lines. Yeah. Or, like, you see these things happen, like, oh, this guy fell down during the, the taping, and they had right. to, like, you know, substitute something else for it. And it was... It was really good. Yeah. I was I was very impressed. Yeah, it's so good. Okay, we'll go ahead and move in to our final thoughts. Um, so I give this movie a resounding thumbs up, and I'm gonna place it at. I don't. I don't know what to say. I would say if there's any, I'm, I'm not gonna give my nuggy score yet. I'm gonna give it a little bit of explanation. The movie's amazing, and it's really really great. If there's anything to take away from it, it's that it is touted as a zombie comedy, a horror comedy. And really, that's only the first 37 minutes. The fake movie is definitely a horror comedy. The rest of the film is it has more in common with Ocean's Eleven than it does like a horror movie because we just, it's really great at like setting up all these cups. And then in the last act, we're picking all the cups off with ping pong balls. Like it's just great at doing that. And, um, because of that, it's hard to really like, if I knew that going into it, we probably wouldn't have watched it on a Monday because like typically we're watching something a little bit more horror. So, Mm -hmm. you know, horror comedies are totally, up for up for grabs like Tucker and Dale versus evil has plenty of gore Mm -hmm. and horror movie stuff in it that it's a horror comedy. This movie's only horror moments are in the first 37 minutes. Um, The rest of it is not. It's still extremely enjoyable. Um, So because of that, it gets my thumbs up, but because what we focus on here are scary movies and I had to do this to uh, depraved last week because Kind of had a similar issue, except it went more into like a drama direction, which when you're expecting horror and you get funny, like it's still OK. Mm-hmm. I think when you're expecting horror and you really get drama, it's just such a letdown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm still going to rate it really high. It's still 95 nuggies to me, um, but it, it, it would be 100 if there was a fourth level of meta Mm -hmm. and there really was like an entire zombie apocalypse happening on the outside while they're making this little movie and they're just stuck in their own little world because all they're doing is making the movie right so like if it did that i'd be like yes it's a horror movie because horrible things are actually happening the way this movie set up horrible things aren't actually happening you think that they're not and then they start to but then you see in the end that even the ones that you thought were real were not real. So, like, because of that, I dock at five nuggets because it's not a horror movie. Uh, but it's an amazing comedy. One of my favorite comedies, uh, definitely, that I've seen within the last year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, I also watched uh, Little Monsters recently, which is a zombie comedy with Lupita Nyong'o that was on Hulu. Mm-hmm. And it was good. And it was funny. It's not half as funny as this movie. And it's not remotely as satisfying. (laughs) This would be so damn satisfying. Um, So yeah, thumbs up, 95 nuggets. Um, I would give something similar. I'd give it 85. I, so 
like I said, there was a point in the middle where it, where it dipped, and I was I told the, the everybody that was there. I said, I am not yeah. on board. I do not like this. I am kind of over this movie. And then once once it kind of hit that third act where you it really kind of showed what it was, uh, I really enjoyed it, and I think that. If if you're expecting, like we said, a comedy horror like Shaun of the Dead, mm-hmm. that's not it. Right. This is a a view into like a, a tertiary view into how this movie was made. It's really good. But like you said, like it's there's never that like, oh, it's actually a horror movie. There's nothing right. actually scary in it. But I think seeing behind the curtain, behind like one level of it was really good and really fresh so much fun i i kept anticipating the studio execs to like be one more level of like horror and evil like Mm. because there's the one studio executive who stays in the studio frightening she's she's a frightening looking woman my gosh (laughs) and then there's the one who's actually on set while they're doing it yeah i kept expecting him to like actually introduce a real zombie or like yeah. actually murder somebody or something like that. And then it'd be like, just again, like that fourth level would be mm-hmm. like, Oh shit, we're making a movie. And then it, we pretended that that movie became real. And then that was a movie. And then like, Oh shit. Now it is the real, like, yeah, I, ex- I kept expecting that almost like a uh, cabin in the woods, yeah. like where these studio executives like we're pulling some strings and like real deaths would occur, mm-hmm. but we never got there. And I don't know that we had to, like, I'm not saying that the movie would have been better if it happened. I'm saying I would have rated it higher. That doesn't mean it would have been a better movie. I just think that uh, it would have been a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And it would have explained why it's exclu- – It's the streaming rights are exclusive to Shudder. And that's because Shudder's really smart and they bought it up before anybody else could. But, like, there's no reason why this needs to be on a horror exclusive yeah. platform. Like, this could be equally, I think, as meta in just terms of, like, filmmaking. Yeah. Like – you could watch this as non horror and still, I think if you had any experience in filmmaking as a production assistant mm-hmm. or anything like that, or a grip, anything yeah. you go, Oh, like I've totally had this happen when right. my actor shows up drunk or I trip when I'm supposed to get this one shot and I have to kind of make it up as I go or I have to run up the ladder. And it's a, it's thing. a great view of that. It's a great view of that. And, and for people who are maybe unfamiliar with how films are made, like to see all these, even, even seeing it as bit like this tiny little indie thing, there's still all these little moving pieces yeah. that are constantly happening. And like, you know, a, a lady who's like holding fake blood in a hose and then like <laughs> blowing it out, out at your face so that you get blood splatter on your face. Like all of these little things, like throwing fake dead bodies in so that you have like a body drop, like, cause they threw it. Like all of these little things that like, we don't really think about when we're watching a horror movie and we're just consuming it for entertainment. Like to see all those things play out, I think it's super fun. And uh, again, just things that people don't think about, but everyone can relate to like obviously if you've worked in any creative capacity on you know videography or filming like you can probably relate to it but like everyone has those things in your job where like on the surface level everything's like fine and nobody knows but behind the scenes everything's on fire Like everyone has, I don't know about you. Like maybe I'm misspeaking, but like, I feel like everyone in every job in the world probably has had a situation like that somewhere. Or if maybe it's not your job, it's your kids. Like everything looks great on the outside, but then like you open up the door to the minivan and it's just fucking chaos. Like, (laughs) <laughs> like there's just always like this kind of hidden chaos within something that looks great. And I think that probably most films on set, look very similar to what we just witnessed yeah, even I, like the highest budget i mean heck, we were just talking about the there's a documentary on netflix the, mm-hmm. the movies that made us and like you see these movies that are so that most of us for the most part are are have been so instrumental in just our movie watching experience and there's so many times when like everything they do is is literally just by the seat of their pants yep and like they just came up with and then it becomes this industry standard of yeah how they do things and like it, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm even thinking. Uh, so another plug, um, I, I listened to the uh, podcast. Um, I think it's called Blockbuster 
on it, on podcasts. <laughs> it's not on a specific platform, anywhere you can get a podcast. Uh, but it's about uh, two different movies. It's about the making of Star Wars mostly, but then it's also about the making of Jaws and um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, because uh, George Lucas and Spielberg were such close friends, mm. and so like they just they talk about that relationship a lot. And uh, I remember I listened to it, and like I had such an even bigger appreciation for George Lucas in his time of like what he was doing when he made A New Hope, and like how that all happened, and how like he filmed in uh somewhere somewhere in uh, the UK, mm-hmm. and like they had like all these different like unions there that we didn't have in America. And there was actually a point in the making of the film where he's like, we're not going to get it done in time. And so he like goes in and he talks to his AD and he's like, Hey, we're not going to get done in time if we don't crunch. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we can't crunch. We have unions here. You can't just do that. And he's like, well, I have an idea. I believe that everyone who's here really wants to make this movie and really wants to see it succeed. So what we'll do is I'll make my case. We'll put it to a vote and we'll like change. Cause like they literally had like union mandated tea time, like on top of like lunch breaks and like uh, you can't work like over like eight hours or 10 hours a day or whatever it was. There was like union mandated tea time. So they'd be like in the middle of shooting like a lightsaber battle. And then it's like the whole crew has to take off for tea. Earl Grey time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Earl Grey Socialism, am I right? I'm, no, no, no. We're not going there. I like Earl Grey. Ugh. I like the Bergamot. Anyway. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I just have a higher developed palate, my friend. Uh, <laughs> God, this is getting weird. Uh, so yeah, he's like, I'll put it to a vote with the whole crew mm-hmm. because everyone wants to see it succeed. So like we can work. It was like 12 hour or 14 hour days. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, you know, stuck in this like eight hour day right. and then we'll have enough time to get it done. And uh, the AD is basically like, yeah, if you put it to a vote and they all agree to it, we can do it. But that's the only way you can get around the union rules. Wow. And he did it. Wow. And they said no. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. I know. And so like, it's just like, and so like things like that happen and like you just develop this whole new appreciation for like what Star Wars is and like where it's come and like how it became like, like it's just such a great example. So if you have any interest in that whatsoever, check out the the blockbuster podcast. It's really interesting. Um, but things like that happen on right. movie sets and yeah. like even on huge ones like that. So I remember I listened to that podcast and I walked out of it and like, my takeaway as someone who like wants to be a creator, like mm-hmm. I, I make graphics, I make videos, I do this podcast. Like I consider myself a content creator of some sort in my professional life. I take photos and videos. Like I'm, I feel like I'm a creative person. And like what I walked out of it with was like, no matter what I do in my life mm-hmm. and no matter how much pressure I may feel to like do a project or finish a project or mm-hmm. make sure a project succeeds and is mm-hmm. actually good. Never <laughs> will I ever be in the same scenario as George Lucas making the first <laughs> star Wars. <laughs> and he turned out. Okay. <laughs> like he's not the great, he's not the best. He, he made three decent movies and then three pretty bad movies, but like he still turned out. Okay. 50% is pretty good. <laughs> And so, like, I don't know. It was really, really cool. It's a great podcast. Uh, but, yeah, so that that kind of I, – I, I find that stuff super interesting. If you find any of that interesting, you'll love this movie. Like, like that's that's all that it's about. Mm-hmm. Is It's kind of the triumph of the underdog. Like, even though a million things went wrong when they tried to do this For live, sure. <laughs> like, it still happened. Yeah. And then, like, just to see, like, the actors' expressions and the crew's expressions, like mm-hmm. when it's done, which even the crew are also actors, so it's hard to like separate. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying um, is really really cool. And then what's the, kind of the best part is like after you've seen that, while the credits are rolling, you get you get that fourth 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 wall. You get- yeah. And so there is a behind during the credits rolling, there is a like behind the scenes, just like handy cam that's watching the people filming who are filming the movie, who are the actors in the real movie. And so like you get a behind the behind the scenes, which, you know, is kind of what I wanted. And, and it's just so much fun. It's super endearing. Mm-hmm. And like 
you go on this ride with these people and you feel like you're connected to them, but you are actually connected to characters. Yeah. Like, cause that's the thing. Like the director of one cut of the dead, the movie is not the director, the character. Right. Like there's still one more level. Yeah. <laughs> and so like when you finally get to see this behind the behind the scenes, like it's just like so it's just warm and fuzzies. Like you feel like you're kind of a part of this club now. And like you, you've, it, it, I don't know, like it just reminds me like kind of being a kid and watching Jackass and then seeing like the behind the scenes stuff at the end. And like it, they feel like your friends. You're like, yeah, like we went through this together. Like because you get to see all the hardships that they had making the movie, mm-hmm. even though that was the the movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the, a, a lot of the times when we watch movies together as a group, the best movies that we really enjoy are the ones that we enjoy together, that we have this That's weird true. symbiotic thing about. And for this one, we really, I mean, there were only three of us there. And so Cody was here, yep. which I'm sure you've heard about, or you've heard him talk. And there were, when we saw things happen, we all connected to it and really just, like just, I mean, just cackled oh, or yeah. just guffawed or wh- whatever you want to <laughs> say, and it was a really the the first act really set up the third act to just does. be this really really enjoyable yep. time that we all just really loved. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I would a hundred percent recommend if you're going to watch it, watch it with people. Yeah. Like, and they don't even have to be horror fans. I'm gonna watch this again with my wife. She's gonna love it. Like. Yes, they might if they're they're really against horror movies, they might have to muscle through that first 37 minutes. But even that is pretty funny. Yeah, there's like, not a lot of horror nah, in it. Nah. Just watch it. Yep. Please watch it. Yeah, please really watch good. it. Uh okay, we'll uh we'll uh finish up here. So that gives it a two thumbs up. Let's do uh two thumbs up. This is for the thumbnail. Look at the middle camera. Perfect. And then um yeah, so that uh you you 85 out of 95, so we'll yeah. call it a uh, ninety. Yep, we'll go on a ninety percent. That's a that's an A. Yeah, in most, in most schools. And honestly, like that might be one of our higher scores in a while. Yeah. Like, because even whenever we watch things, a lot of times, like there's a little yin and yang, and it's like, or you know, I've been on this thing of like not wanting to give seventies. So like, if I don't think it's good, I'm gonna knock it down to a sixty, and you know, somebody else might knock it knock it up to an eighty, and then it ends up at about seventy. But like. Uh, it's a really high score for what we've been watching lately. So I think that uh, if you follow us and you're listening to this and you haven't seen Warm Cut of the Dead, you definitely need to watch it. All right. That wraps it up for us here tonight. For Night Shift Video, my name is James, and this guy is... Josh. We're just saying, thanks for stopping in. <laughs>